You can cross Europe by train in a day. In America, you can't even get from Boston to Nashville without switching to a bus. The United States once had an extensive long-distance passenger rail system connecting most major cities. Local streetcars and trolleys linked smaller towns to those lines. Together, they made rail travel a normal part of daily life. Then came the car, the interstate highway system, and affordable flights. By the 1970s, most intercity routes were gone, and local rail had nearly disappeared. Amtrak was created to keep passenger rail alive, but even today it runs mostly on tracks it does not own. Only a small share of its routes belong to Amtrak itself. The rest are controlled by freight railroads, and when freight trains take priority, passenger trains wait. America's network feels disconnected because it only links a few busy corridors, mostly in the Northeast and parts of California. Much of the country has little or no service, Many cities, including Las Vegas, Phoenix, Columbus, and Nashville, lack regular long-distance passenger trains. Europe's system is different. It was rebuilt after World War II around people, not freight. Trains there are frequent, interconnected, and often faster than flying between nearby cities. In the United States, most rail infrastructure is built to move goods, not people. And funding for passenger rail still happens corridor by corridor not through a single national plan. Projects like California's high-speed rail show how costs, politics, and lawsuits can drag on for years. Now a new question is emerging. If cars start driving themselves, do we still need trains? Some experts imagine self-driving vehicles moving in tight, automated platoons on highways, like digital trains, guided by sensors and GPS. That could make long-distance travel smoother, safer, and cleaner especially if those cars are electric. But energy is part of the equation too. A single train moving hundreds of passengers still uses far less energy per person than hundreds of separate electric cars. And even if highways become synchronized, cities cannot absorb endless streams of vehicles. Rail can move large numbers of people directly into dense urban cores without gridlock. The challenge is that both systems need investment Highways will need upgrades for automation to work safely, and the rail network needs to be rebuilt if it's ever going to connect the country again. The future of travel might depend on fixing both.